stress, fear, depression, spiritual warfare. Are you weighted down? Do you need refreshing? Welcome. Welcome everyone to the Warriors for Christ podcast, where we seek to uplift, edify, and encourage you to be light and salt in a dark and tasteless world with your host, Kyle. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Warriors for Christ podcast. I'm Kyle. And I'm Sam. And we're delighted that you, our audience, are out there and you're listening again. You know, Brother Sam, we've had uh, we've had a lot of feedback about this series. People are people are convicted of their sins, and some are, some are angry. And uh, so, with that, what has the Lord put on your heart for us to get into in this episode? Well, Kyle, we have to continue to point out people and their fallacy of going down, having a a faith, but yet they're denying Christ. It's a false confession. Amen. Amen. All right, well. God only speaks the truth, Kyle. God doesn't lie to people like much of the church does today. Now, I'll, I'll give it, much of the church today, they lie in ignorance. They don't even know. Yeah. They're deceived while they're deceiving others as 2 Timothy tells us. Yep. Well, Sam, with that, I'll open us in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for the holiness of your word, your truth. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit, that life-changing helper that helps to guide us in our life, to expose the falsehood, to expose the wickedness that allows us to see and where to walk, allows us to live as Christ your Son lived. Father, we pray that today, every word that is spoken, that it be a beautiful aroma to your nose, that it further your kingdom, that it accomplish your will. We pray, O Lord, that your will be done. We pray that lives out there that are listening hear these words. Let it resonate to their heart. Let their heart be softened. Let them follow along in their Bibles that they might test what we say, that they might see with their own eyes, that they hear with their own ears the message you have for them today to break apart and tear down the lies that for some people might be decades in the making. For some people, it might be completely new to them, O Lord. But we pray that your word resonates in their heart, that it open their heart to the truth, and that, Father, you pour your spirit in and you fill them with a filling that has... We we pray that it's double, Lord, that it exceedingly and abundantly change their life, that they would become a worker in your kingdom, a living stone, something that is a living sacrifice acceptable for your service. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So, Kyle, as God instructed, we're going to continue to point out and expose the false confessions in Christ, the false belief. People who believe they're actually serving God but they're going to be accused of denying Christ. Kyle, 2 Peter 2, verse 1. But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will also be false teachers among you, who will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. Now, Kyle... People would agree that verse that ver- first verse is pretty clear. Yep. Most people say, yep, just as there are false prophets, leaders in the past, it will be so today. Yep. And of course, by nature of them being false, 
people would conclude that, of course, they're going to introduce destructive heresies because they're false teachers. Mm -hmm. And so it's not hard for some people to even accept that some of this false teaching will be charged as denying the master who bought them. And so I'm sure most people who are listening today will agree with that statement that, yep, I think I understand what God's trying to say, and praise God, I'm not that person. Well, there's verse 2. But what I'm going to point out today, Kyle, is that many, and sadly, many of the people that are listening that will hear this message, God would charge them as being that person. Yeah. So I want to give some backdrop because you can get into a wrangling of words and arguments. But the best way through that, Kyle, is to look at God's full story of what he's communicating. Now, this is a very short book. It's only three chapters. Yeah. So first, let's understand the highlights and the principles of what is the true message God is trying to communicate contradicted with this false teaching. And when you look at the two together, Kyle, it becomes really clear. And I pray that people and some people who are listening today will fall on their face before God, weeping with fear and trembling, coming in humility and repentance before God, acknowledging that maybe for the first time ever their eyes have been opened and they now realize that they were that person that would have been accused of denying Christ, even though they confessed him with their mouth. 2 Peter, chapter 1. Kyle, God sent Christ to rescue us. But it's not the rescue that a lot of people think. God wanted to do something. He wanted to do something in our life that was divinely powerful. Mm -hmm. Not just in Christ's life, but in our life. Kyle, in verse 3, what does God say? Seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness, through the true knowledge of him, who called us by his own glory and excellence. So the first thing God wants us to know, and this is speaking to those who've received a faith of the same kind as ours in verse 1. You see, not everybody has received this same kind of faith. But if you truly have received the same kind of faith, then what you are to know is that God did something. By God's divine power. Not man's power, not man's will, but by God's power, he granted to the true saint everything pertaining to life and godliness. Now, what does it mean to be granted everything pertaining to life and godliness? I I get brought to that uh, verse in Colossians. Well, and Kyle, we... The fullness of deity. Well, yeah, and we did the episode in part one of the false confession Mm -hmm. that covered what godliness. That's right. What's this message of truth according to godliness? And it's all about a changed life. That's right. So the question is, did God's divine power grant something to you pertaining to this life and godliness? Can you overcome sin? You see, Kyle, for that person that it has happened to in verse 4, They've become a partaker of something, Kyle. What is it? For by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises, so that by them, those promises, you may become partakers of the divine nature. Now, becoming a partaker of the divine nature, Kyle, this isn't a future. This is a now. You see, it's now being filled with all the deity of God, which we covered In the book of Ephesians, having been filled to all the same fullness of Christ. And we've covered that in so many other episodes, too. The question is, has it happened to you now? Have you right now become a partaker of the divine nature? 
If you have become a partaker of the divine nature, Kyle, what happened? Having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. Kyle, wow, this sounds really similar to all that that we covered in the part one episode. That's right. Did you escape? Right? It's, it's, I think it was 1 Peter chapter 1, I think it was maybe verse 13 or 14, where it says, As obedient children, no longer conforming to the former lusts which were yours in ignorance, but no like longer. the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves in all your behavior. All. Just like God is holy. Not part. For you shall be holy, for I am holy. Amen. Now, it's important to understand that because the first fact that God wants to understand and establish is if you have received the same faith, a faith that saves, if you have been granted by God's divine power all that which pertains to life and godliness, then you would have become a partaker of the divine nature. You would have escaped this corruption that is in the world by lust. And now you're able to live a different life. It is only for the reason of having put on the divine nature. It is only for the reason of having experienced the true power of God. It is for that reason and that reason only. Not by trying, not by man's effort, but as, an est uh, as a proof and a testament That's right. that you received the divine nature. Because if you did, then for that reason, you're able to apply all diligence in your faith. And you're able to supply moral excellence and moral excellence knowledge. And knowledge, mastery. And mastery, perseverance. And perseverance, godliness. And godliness, kindness. And kindness, love. Kyle, are these qualities to be ours? Are we to possess these? Are they to continue to be abounding? Not only that, they're to be increasing. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they render you neither useless nor unfruitful in the true knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But Kyle, there's a problem. You see, Kyle, some people lack these qualities. For he who lacks these qualities is blind or short-sighted, having forgotten his purification from his former sins. Or maybe they were never purified or cleansed from the former sins. Maybe the old sins were never removed and put to death. Either way, there's a problem. But Kyle, somebody who has been endowed with this power, somebody who has now is able to live by the qualities of this godliness and holiness. For in this way, the entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be abundantly supplied to you. You mean in this way? In you mean way. in verse 10 when he says, Therefore, brethren, be all the more diligent to make certain about God's calling That's right. and election of you? For as long as you practice these things, That's what you, gotta practice. you will never stumble. Never stumble. And in this way is the entrance into the eternal kingdom? Cannot stumble. Now, Kyle, have you ever heard that gospel message preached in any church that as long as you have received the power of God, the partaker of God's divine nature, only if you escape the corruption of the world, only by being able to now live in this moral excellence— only by possessing and abounding in those qualities, that is how you make certain you will never stumble and enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's right. Kyle, I've, I've never heard a pastor preach that. I don't think they like to preach that, Sam. Nope. And they, Kyle, what they we're going like to find that. out is they're the blasphemers that preach the other message that we're going to find out is why God's going to accuse them of denying Christ. Because they don't preach that message, Kyle. They preach the other. You see why it's so important to start at the beginning and look at the full story? Yep. So you have the full context? That's right. To tear down and destroy the work of the devil that likes to take one verse here and one verse there. Pick and, and twist pluck. and distort. Pick, pluck, and distort. That's what they do. 
Kyle, this message was so important. Did Peter say this was something that they should always remember? I consider it right as long as I am in this earthly dwelling to stir you up by way of reminder, knowing that the laying aside of my earthly dwelling is imminent, as also our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me. And I will also be diligent that at any time after my departure, you will be able to call these things to mind. These things, the things that we just covered, these are the things we'll always be able to call to mind to preach and to proclaim. But Kyle, there's a problem. Not everybody is preaching these things. Not everybody is recalling these things to mind. Some people have never been taught them. Sam, Kyle, what are they following? They're following the ways... We did not follow cleverly devised tales oh, when we made so, known... so these other people are following cleverly de- devised tales. That's right. When we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. So, Kyle, what it comes down to is whether or not people are going to accept the truth. Because Scripture, as it says in verse 20 that no prophecy or scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. That's right. No prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, but by men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. Amen. But there are people who are going to contradict this message, Kyle. Yep. And they are the ones that was pointed out in chapter 2, verse 1, false prophets arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies. Destructive heresies. Denying the master who brought them. Now, notice it says secretly introduced. It's going to be like a hidden secret. Yep. You're not even going to realize it. It's kind of like the hidden reefs that we covered in the previous episode. Yep. These people will be fe- feasting and celebrating with you and worshiping you, and you aren't even going to know it. Secretly sneaking. It's so subtle, you don't even realize the heresy that's being taught. Twisting the truth. Now, Kyle, all we have so far in the book of Second Peter is we have the truth that we covered. Yep. Have you become a partaker of the divine nature? Does all the fullness of deity live in you? Is it evidenced by your life living a life of moral excellence? And in that way, you guarantee your entrance into the kingdom of heaven. It's a proof of faith. Is that the truth? Well, we know that's the truth. But the question is, what are these lies? Kyle, he hasn't told us what the lie is. We've heard what the truth is. Obviously, the truth, the lie has to be something contrary to the truth. Many will follow their own sensu- their sensuality, and because of them... The way of the truth will be maligned. And the word is blasphemo. It will be blasphemed. You see, they're going to struggle with their own sin. And because of these people who go around proclaiming Christ but still struggle with sin, the truth is going to be blasphemed by their life and by their mouth. They're going to exploit you with false words. But their judgment in the eyes of God from long ago is not idle. And their destruction is not asleep. They will be destroyed. So what are these false claims that they're making? Well, we know it doesn't agree with what God said is the truth. And now God's going to speak against statements here of what apparently these people were saying it was okay. And what we're going to find out is God has some really harsh words about those who think it's okay to sin and that you're going to escape the judgment of God if you continue in sin. Kyle, does God spare angels when they continue to sin? Not at all. Verse 4, For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell and committed them to pits of darkness reserved for judgment. So did they, you hear that, all you who are listening? He didn't even You want to say you angels. confess Christ? You want to say you believe, but you still sin and you think you have peace with God? Where are all those qualities of godliness in your life that's going to give proof of your entrance into the kingdom of heaven? So in verse 5, And did not spare the ancient world, but preserved Noah, a preacher of righteousness, with seven others, when he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly. The flood on the world of the ungodly to destroy the sinners. And what about Sodom and Gomorrah, Kyle, when they continued to sin and didn't repent? And if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to destruction... By reducing them to ashes, having made them an example 
to those who would live ungodly lives thereafter. So we can't continue to live an ungodly life? Nope. But he rescued righteous Lot, because in the eyes of God, light was, uh, Lot was righteous. And if he rescued righteous Lot, oppressed by the sensual conduct of unprincipled men, for by what he saw and heard, that righteous man, while living among them, felt his righteous soul tormented day after day by their lawless deeds. Then to sum it up, Kyle, what the false teachers aren't saying, that God declares loud and true, <laughs> that is truth, and anything against this statement is a blaspheme. That's right. What is the truth that God wants everybody to know today and declare, if you do not accept this truth, then you deny Christ. The Lord knows how to rescue the godly from temptation and to keep the unrighteous under punishment for the day of judgment. Do you still struggle with sin even though you don't want to do it? You ask God for help, but somehow you cannot overcome? It's because God's not with you. It's because you don't accept and understand the power of God of the divine nature and the one fruit that it produces. You're holding to a half-truth that tolerates sin, that has no power to overcome even though you pray and you plead to ask God. Why do you even ask God to help you overcome sin when many of you think that you cannot overcome, that you're always going to be a slave of sin your whole life? There's a problem. Kyle, the problem is these people, these false teachers. Yeah. In verse 12, it says these people are like unreasoning animals. They're born as creatures of instinct to be captured and destroyed. They blaspheme where they have no knowledge and they will in the destruction of those creatures also be destroyed. In verse 13, it says, they will receive the wages of unrighteousness because that's what they continue to do. They continue to sin. Kyle, they count it a pleasure as they feast in the daytime. Yep. But what does God say they are? They are stains and blemishes reveling in their deceptions as they carouse with you. You see, they go to church with you. Uh, they, quote, serve in the church with you. They feast, they celebrate, they worship with you. The problem is God says they have eyes full of adultery. Yep. In the eyes of God, they have eyes full of adultery that are unable to cease from sin. They cannot stop sinning. They sin and have to confess their sins every night because they never received the divine nature. Their heart is still corrupt. They have a heart trained in greed. It's the same heart that they were born with. God says these people are accursed children. Yep. He says they've forsaken the right way and they've gone astray. Following which way, Kyle? Following the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Now, most people would say, oh, I don't love the wages of unrighteousness. Well, let me say, you believe in God. You claim to talk to God. You say he answers your prayer. You worship him. You say you're obedient to him. Kind of like Balaam. Balaam talked with God. God talked with him. He spoke the words of God. Balaam was outwardly obedient to every recorded instruction that was given to him in, the, in the, this example here in Numbers chapter 31. Or 22. Numbers chapter 22 it is. Everything. He was obedient. But yet God knew his heart and his thoughts, and he accused him of loving the wages of unrighteousness. We did a more in-depth study of this in the Second Peter episode. But he received a rebuke for his own transgression by a, a mute donkey, speaking with the voice of a man, restrained the madness of the prophet. But yet when you go and you read the story in Numbers chapter 22, Balaam was completely 100% obedient the whole time. You're like, wait a second, why was he being rebuked? He was 100% obedient to God and everything. Because God knows the heart and your thoughts. That's right. So what does God say about these people who think they believe in God? These are springs without water and mists driven by a storm, for whom the black darkness has been reserved. In the eyes of God, what do they speak, Kyle? Speaking out arrogant words of vanity, they entice by fleshly desires, by sensuality, those who barely escape from the ones who live in error. Kyle, do these people promise others freedom? Oh, you can have freedom in Christ. Promising them freedom while they themselves are slaves of corruption. You mean these people who promise others freedom, 
cannot escape sin themselves. Nope. For by what a man is overcome, by this he is a slave. You know, Kyle, this sounds familiar to what we talked about in the part one episode uh, when we looked at uh, John chapter 8, verse 31 to 34, where Jesus says, if any man still commits sin, he's a slave of sin, and he has not yet been set free, and he will not get to remain in the house. That's right. It's the same thing, Kyle. Yep. And some people do truly escape the defilements of the world, but some people become enslaved again. For if, after they have escaped the defilements of the world by the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, if they are again entangled in them and are overcome, the last state has become worse for them than the first. And that's an example of people say, oh, no, no, no. You can receive the Spirit and escape the defilements of the world, and once that happens, it can never be undone. Listen to the episode we did on Once Saved, Always Saved. Yep. God says it depends. Yep. Kyle, for these people, even though they knew the way of righteousness, what does God say about it? In verse 21, For it would be better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn away from the holy commandment handed on to them. Because in God's foreknowledge, he knew that these people were dogs and pigs. As he says. Yep. It has happened to them, according to the true proverb, a dog returns to its own vomit, and a sow, after washing, returns to wallowing in the mire. So, all you who are listening, God doesn't want you to die. He wants you to live. But you need to wake up and listen to the true message of the gospel, and you need to come to true repentance. Kyle, read chapter 3, verse 9. Verse 9. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. Go listen to the episode we did on repentance. We did a six-part episode on true repentance. Don't listen to the lying words of what people tell you through the wisdom of man. You see, judgment's coming, people. Judgment is coming, and it's going to come quickly. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, in which the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat, and the earth and its works will be burned up. Kyle, it's going to be all burned up, including many of the people. You, it, that's why you better watch out how you live. Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? In holy conduct and in godliness. Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning. So Kyle, in verse 14, what type of people are we to be? Beloved, since you look for these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, spotless and blameless. That's it. That's what we're to be found by. Peace, spotless and blameless. Would you say that that's how God's going to see you? Or are you going to use some excuse of a magic cloak? Did you already forget so quickly what we covered in chapter 1 about who enters the kingdom of heaven? Those who live according to godliness and moral excellence and mastery because they've received the divine nature as proof and evidence? Listen, many people are going to try to distort you. They are going to deceive and twist the words, especially the words of Paul, just as they did did then, they still do now. In verse 16, what does he say, Kyle? As also in all his letters, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to understand, which the untaught and unstable distort, as they do also the rest of the scripture, to their own destruction. You therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, be on your guard so that you're not carried away by the error of unprincipled men and fall from your own steadfastness. But And that's my prayer to all those who are listening. Amen to that. Dig into the Word of God, understand the truth. Understand God's story and explanation and stop relying on the wisdom of men in this distortion of the truth. God is coming and there will be a judgment. The question is, what clothes is he, is he going to find you wearing? Is he going to find you wearing some magical cloak cloak of imputed righteousness that does not exist? Or the cloak of a true righteous man 
based upon the true deeds of holiness that the person was able to walk in. Raleigh, what, or, uh, Kyle, what's Revelation chapter 19, verse 7 through 8? Let us rejoice and be glad and give glory to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. It was given to her to clothe herself in fine linen, bright and clean. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. The righteous deeds of the saints. Kyle, those are the deeds that God is looking for. Yep. Those are the deeds that God is only going to be able to find in somebody who has truly put on the divine nature. But for many other, Kyle, they still do wrong. That's right. And the eyes of God, they're still filthy. What does God say about those people in chapter 22, verse 11 of Revelation? Let the one who does wrong still do wrong. And the one who is filthy still be filthy. So we let those people, they want to reject the truth. They want to continue to be stuck in their sin and their filth and wickedness before God. Let them be. But as for the righteous man, Kyle, what does God say? And let the one who is righteous still practice righteousness, and the one who is holy still keep himself holy. Because God is coming, and he's going to judge. And how is he going to judge in verse 12? Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to render to every man according to his deeds. There you go, people. You can accept the word of God or not. You're going to profess his name, or by your deeds you're going to deny him. And unfortunately, Kyle, there's many, and there's many people who are listening now. They're following these leaders who will be accused of blaspheming the truth, who are not preaching the full message. If you're listening today and you have not heard the full message of the truth and insight into who are those that are blaspheming, how do you have confidence that you're going to stand before God? Your life depends on it. You need to get into the word as if your life depends on it. You need to wash your robes, people. Verse 14. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter by the gates into the city. Father, I pray that you will convict people by your word. Lead them, O God, to your living water, to your righteousness, O God, to your freedom, to the power of the Spirit of God that it might dwell in them, that they may be cleansed and purified from all sin and unrighteousness to live a life holy and blameless to you. Convict them, O God. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you enjoyed the program, consider subscribing and sharing with your friends. Thanks for listening.